Today is Saturday, September 2nd. What is it really like to be a reality TV star? Today, we're talking with a former Real Housewife who was labeled a villain about how she says she was treated behind the scenes and the toll it took on her personal life. And we're having this conversation at a time when other reality performers are looking to unionize. Well-known reality star Bethany Frankel is leading those efforts and says not only do reality contestants deserve to be paid fairly, they also need to be treated better. She even has support from SAG-AFTRA, the union that represents actors. And there's talk of a class action lawsuit against NBC Universal. Our guest today is not directly involved in those efforts, but she is sharing her experience in reality TV, from being told to drink more alcohol to moments she says were fabricated. Kara Alloway was on The Real Housewives of Toronto in 2017. Her new book, Most Hated, is a lighthearted fictional novel about women in the reality TV world that has been called a must-read for Housewives fans. And today, she's opening up about her real-life experience filming a show she says did not portray reality at all. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy Special Edition Saturday, when we sit down with a different expert or celebrity every Saturday to talk about something in the news. Don't forget to tune in every Monday through Friday for our regular episodes, where we provide all the day's news in 10 minutes. I'm Erica Mandy. It's now time for today's Special Edition Saturday. Kara, thank you so much for joining us here on the Newsworthy. Well, thank you very much for having me. So first, let's talk a little bit about your experience in reality TV, starting with what motivated you to join the cast of The Real Housewives of Toronto in the first place. I was doing a lot of um, work on the charity circuit when I could. And I went to my husband and I said, you know what? I've been watching a lot of reality television and I think I have a great idea for a reality television show. And it was to be called Sweet Charity and it was to be like Million Dollar Listing meets My Sweet Sixteen sort of and a look behind the scenes at big ticket charity event galas. So I researched and I found a production company that was a Canadian production company that was producing reality television content and I talked to them about this idea for a show. And they said, you know what? We will option the rights to this show right now and we'll get back to you. Well, they're getting back to me said, look, we're doing a show and we think, you know, you might be perfect for this show and your hook can be the charity circuit. And it can be like a sizzle for this reality show you want to do. Truth be told, I, I wasn't looking to be on the show. I wanted to produce the show, but they said, this is a side door in. It's a great way to get your show made. And I, I'm one of those people that if there's something that looks interesting, that looks fun, I'll do it. Why not? And how do you feel about that process and how that went down looking back at it now? Going into it, I thought it would be an exciting opportunity to share my life. And, you know, I am the biggest proponent of my family. I think my kids are great. I think my husband's funny. And I thought this is fun and people are going to love this. And I went in with a very positive attitude. I did a psychological analysis that was required by production before we started shooting. The result of that was a report that started out by saying Kara Alloway has a very high emotional intelligence. That is exactly what you're looking for when you're casting a villain on one of these reality television shows. You want someone who has a very loose filter, a dynamic personality, sorry, but I do, and a very high emotional intelligence. You want someone who feels deeply and passionately. That was who I was. How do you feel about being labeled a villain? How do you think it, it turned out that way? And what was that like for you looking, you know, watching it back? It was horrific. What you see is not necessarily what's filmed. And I think people don't really understand this, that these shows have writers, these shows have editors, and specifically these shows have story editors. So you might be shooting four to six hours a week of content and you have no idea how it's going to be stitched together. Case in point, I hosted a trunk show at my home for the cast members who I invited. One of the cast members was a plus size individual. So I made sure that there was a dress for the plus size individual at the event that she could try on. I was not going to have anybody ostracized. That's not who I am. People who know me know that's not who I am. In the airing of the show, they edited out her trying on the dress. There was a lot of dialogue um, with her and in her interviews saying, you know, I was so hurt and I was the only one that couldn't try on a dress. They edited comments from the designer where it sounded like he was saying, oh, I wish someone had told me that we needed all size inclusivity here because I would have arranged for that. So it became Kara Alloway is this horrible, vitriolic, mean girl who had this event to ostracize this girl. So this is relevant because what came out of this is 
the girl who was the plus size then launched her platform. She became the poster child for, you know, plus size fashion and whatnot in Canada. And I became this horrible pariah that was a horrible mean girl when that was not the actual narrative at all. And people would say to me, you know, if your walls could talk, what would they say? And I said, they would say she tried on a dress. Everybody tried on a dress. But that didn't fit with the manufactured narrative that the produ producers wanted. For years, people from various reality shows have actually alleged being manipulated by producers behind the scenes or at least being encouraged, you know, to act certain ways. Did you ever feel pressured in that way during the actual filming? And, and did you witness anything like that? A hundred percent. I participated in something like that. So during one scene on a inflatable, they called it a water banana, but you know, it's an inflatable that's towed behind a boat. They wanted the water banana to tip and all the ladies to get wet. Ha ha, great, you know, shtick on television. I don't think for a minute they anticipated when the water banana flipped that I would break two ribs, which I did. So fast forward two weeks and there's a group trip to um, Barcelona. And my doctor said, I would not advise you to go. You have two green strip fractured ribs and I don't think it's a good idea for you to go. So I am providing you a note to share with your employers as well as their insurers to say this is why Kara Alloway cannot participate in this. Well, production was furious and enraged. And, you know, you must go see our doctors. Your doctor doesn't count. We want a copy of your CT scan. I mean, it was absolutely ridiculous in a normal work environment. That would never be acceptable. But again, who governs the rules? I mean, you sign this participant agreement, all bets are off. I have to tell you, when I was signing the agreement, I had lawyers telling me, you got to be nuts to sign this. I mean, th there's parts of it that say, if you get injured, we will call an ambulance, but we have the right to keep filming. I take all of the responsibility for participating. I take all of the responsibility for my actions, for saying what I said. But again, the environment, I mean, where where was human resources on the environment when all this was happening? You know, it would never happen in another environment, in another job situation. There was a lot of questions I had afterward to say, this was not cool. This is not how it should be. My understanding is you also were a TV producer. Um, was that for reality TV? And did you ever do things or feel pressure to then pressure the stars to do things that you now look back on and say, uh, you know, maybe I shouldn't have done that? No, there's no better producer than a, a recovering reality participant. So my shows were also very different. My my actual shows were the charity show that I wanted to do, and it was Dallas Planners Club, a look behind the scenes at these event planners interacting with each other. And I actually had very frank conversations with my cast, and I said, look, I'm looking for drama, but I'm not going to manufacture anything because that's artifice and that's not what I'm after. I think that in my opinion, an audience is keenly aware when the drama, there's a difference between augmenting the drama and manufacturing the drama. And what I experienced was manufactured drama. I think what a lot of the other shows that we see that we enjoy do is they augment the drama. And now your new book, Most Hated, recently came out. It gives us a fictional story of reality TV. But is it based on your experience? How much overlap is there? I will tell you this, the emotional distress and the anxiety and the emotions definitely informed the characterization. The characters and events are, you know, any semblance to real life is purely coincidental. But one of the most frustrating parts about being a reality television participant in this genre is the overwhelming NDAs. So. I wasn't allowed to do any press where I could say, for example, when I was referring to the dress, I couldn't say that woman tried on a dress at my house. So I really wanted a chance to tell my story in the bigger picture, if that makes sense. I had always wanted to write a book about female relationships. And my book, the reality television is the backdrop and the setting. The female relationships is sort of the meat and potatoes. And uh, there's no characters that you would recognize from any franchise of Housewives but I wanted to share that emotional cyclone <laughs> that participants experience. Still ahead, what happens if a reality show contestant wants out? Kara Alloway shares her experience of why it seems nearly impossible to walk away and how much money she says she earned and then lost from being on the show. That and more still ahead. But first, a quick break for our sponsors. 
Want to smell better, longer? Lumi is a doctor-created, uniquely formulated pH-balanced deodorant that is clinically proven to control odor for up to 72 hours. And let's face it, underarms are not the only place we may deal with odor. Think stinky feet after a long day at work? In fact, Lumi is pH balanced so that it's safe to use anywhere and everywhere on your body if you want to. It's also aluminum free, baking soda free, and paraben free. You can choose from a variety of fresh, bright scents like clean tangerine, lavender sage, or toasted coconut. Honestly, I was looking for a better deodorant because my old one was just not working anymore. And I was really pleasantly surprised and excited at how effective Lumi is. Lumi's starter pack is perfect for new customers, too. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes that I like as well, and free shipping. And as a special offer for our listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code NEWSWORTHY at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use that code NEWSWORTHY. Lumi, L-U-M-E, deodorant.com with code NEWSWORTHY. This episode is also brought to you by Miracle Maid. One of my favorite feelings is getting into a clean, cozy bed at the end of the day. And my new Miracle Made sheets helps make that happen so much more often. First of all, these NASA-inspired silver-infused sheets prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, meaning my sheets are cleaner and smelling better for three times longer than other sheets. Which, by the way, is better for my skin, too, since bacteria can clog pores and cause breakouts. Plus, these are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands. So go to trymiracle.com slash newsworthy to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo newsworthy at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash newsworthy and use the code newsworthy to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash newsworthy to treat yourself. Okay, now back to our conversation. Bethany Frankel, who is best known for her years as a Real Housewife uh, of New York, is leading an effort to unionize reality TV stars. You know, she says... Reality TV performers are not paid nearly enough, if at all. They don't receive anything for the reruns that, you know, other actors and performers often do. What are your thoughts on these union efforts overall and and the way that reality stars are paid and treated in general? People say, well, you're filming reality. But what I think is not understood is how much setup is involved in filming this reality. So, you know, two women are having lunch. You're told by your story editor, okay, meet at this restaurant at this time, you're mic'd up, you're kept, kept apart, the director of the scene is there, you have sound technicians, you have cameramen taking you in at different angles, and you know, they they tell you, okay, here's how it's, the scene should begin, and here's how the sh- scene should end, and you sort of do improv in the middle. So this is not, you know, cameras living with you 24-7, and they just happen to capture this moment. What Bethany is getting at is given that all of this is set up, given that all of this, you know, that there's these extents that we go to to create this, what's the compensation for the people? I mean, as I said before about the whole, you know, the fat shaming allegations against myself, I was a social pariah. Everybody just absorbed the narrative that was delivered to them. And that was my reality. Whereas my castmates were all making these lucrative endorsement deals. And I think Bethany's saying, okay, well, if production is going to be the one that's going to pick the villain, then there needs to be some sort of equal compensation. And denying mental health treatment to cast members is another area that they're bringing up. When I was spiraling, I was reaching out to the publicists for the um, production company saying, guys, like, I don't think I can handle this. You have to understand the backlash on social media is terrible. And I am a mature mother of three boys with a great network around me. But I think of these young people who are in their, you know, early to mid twenties going on shows like The Bachelor, going on shows like Vanderpump Rules that don't have that network around them. It's horrible. There needs to be the support structure that you would have in any other work environment. And I think that that's what Bethany is after. And I support her in that. 
there is a class action lawsuit uh, or a lot of talk about it against NBC Universal, a letter to the network where a team of Hollywood lawyers claim productions mistreat uh, reality TV cast members, depriving them of food and sleep, encouraging them to drink alcohol so that they'll eventually act out, even covering up sexual violence. Um, what do you make of these claims? I've experienced, you know, some of them. I, I was driving to my summer home with my 12-year-old son in the car with me, and we had just finished filming a phone call in the car with another cast member. The story editor called and I said, oh, you might not want to talk to me because there's sound equipment in my car and cameras and my 12-year-old son is here. And he said, no, no, this is fine. Listen, if you don't drink more and let your hair down, we're going to have trouble with you on a go-forward basis. So when I heard this, I, first of all, it was a great learning opportunity with my son. He said, so mom, are you going to change what you're going to do so they don't fire you from the show? And I said, quite the contrary. I was hired to be myself and I will continue to be myself. So when I got to my summer home, I called my husband and I said, that's it. I want out. I, I This is not for me. I don't have anything in common with the other women on the show. I need out of this. And what we were told by the lawyers is the nature of this participant agreement that you sign makes it very difficult to leave the show. And I would be responsible for all of the recasting and the refilming and the financial amounts that that would be would total exorbitant amounts. So it was suggested it would be better for me just to sort of suck it up and finish it. Are you comfortable sharing how much you were paid, if at all, for that whole experience? Yes. So in Canadian dollars, it works out to be 27,000 Canadian dollars all in for all the episodes. Keep in mind, you are asked to host parties. You are asked to provide an exciting wardrobe. You are asked to show, highlight a lifestyle that's aspirational. I think all in at the end, my husband and I ended up losing probably around $30,000. I mean, I had a dinner party where I flew cheese in from Italy, you know, like you don't do it for the money. You definitely don't do it for the money, or at least you didn't before. Again, Bethany is trying to say, you know, if these shows, I, I think her point was that people are still watching season one of New York Housewives and being entertained by that, yet she isn't receiving any residuals. And it sounds like they don't cover any sort of expenses that you faced. No, not at all. It's, it's, it's all on you. Well, at least for my production, it was all on me. Now, that being said, my book is not a calculated tell. I think it's really important that your listeners understand. My book is a fun, funny peek behind the curtain at reality television, but I do have layers. And I go into the idea of internalized female misogyny, how women in these female-centric reality television shows interact with each other, how they, you know, speak with each other. As women, we learn how to relate to each other in a very tribal way on the playground at age eight. And the independent thinkers and the truth tellers are ostracized. How are they ostracized? They're shunned, they're gossiped about, they're slandered. And I think we see this happening in these female-centric reality shows. And it's such a great illustration of how women relating to other women fascinates the world and everybody wants to tune in. But as the sisterhood, we have to do better. Any, you know, final thought or takeaway for our listeners about your book, about reality TV, um, about these efforts, anything that you want to leave us with? People are so quick to say, you knew what you were signing up for. You knew what you were getting into. Even after you complain, you go back for another season. I don't think people get it. Once you've put your foot in the pond, so to speak, you have this, she, Bethany called it chasing the dragon and I had to laugh and I was like, I get what she's saying. You want to chase the dragon because the producers play with you and say, come back for another season because you don't want to leave it that way. You want people to know who you really are, don't you? And Meghan Markle wept when she was interviewed in Africa and she said, the worst thing about everything I'm involved in is I don't get to speak my reality. And I think that that is the most emotionally distressing part of being a reality television show participant. Because of the way the contracts are now, because of the way everything's set up, you never actually get to share your reality. And I think that needs to change. And we did reach out to NBC Universal for comment, but they never provided one. In other responses to allegations of inappropriate behavior on reality TV sets, the network has said in part, quote, NBC Universal is committed to maintaining a safe and respectful workplace for cast and crew on our reality shows. 
We require our third-party production partners to have appropriate workplace policies and training in place. If complaints are brought to our attention, we work with our production partners to ensure that timely, appropriate action is taken, including investigations, medical and or psychological support, and other remedial action that may be warranted, such as personnel changes, end quote. For now, thank you to Kara Alloway for her candor about her reality TV experience. Check out her new book, Most Hated, available now. For more information on that and other projects, visit karaalloway.com. Of course, be sure to join us here again for our regular 10-minute news roundups available every weekday morning. We are taking Monday off for the Labor Day holiday, but we'll be back with our next regular episode on Tuesday. So until then, have a great holiday weekend. <music>